Hi, and welcome to another episode of General Nerdery. Today, my buddy Jim here is going to teach you how to play chess. I'll give you a few how-tos on how all the pieces work, interact, and so forth, and a few of the basic rules. Uh, however, this is also going to be our first two-parter, because I'm exceedingly verbose, love to use words, no matter how long, and over-explain things. Doodle. All right, for starters, we have the board. It is a 64 square grid, eight by eight. And when is denoted, the numbered columns go horizontally, the alphabetic one goes vertically. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Moving on from there, we get to the pieces. All right, these guys are your pawns. You start with eight of them and they are the technically the weakest of the pieces according to value as far as what a piece can do. However, they do have a handful of special features. We'll get to those in a minute. But as far as the basics of how they move, we're going to just move these guys off to demonstrate. For a pawn, it advances one space up to move as such and can do so indefinitely across the board one space at a time per turn. However, for a pawn to capture a piece, it captures on a diagonal. So say we have a guy here. The pawn, when it goes to move, as opposed to it moving forward, can capture as such. Moving to that space, capturing this guy, and now he's out of play. The pawn can capture to either side of where it is sitting. That would be the only way to move it from the column that it's in. All right, these guys are the rooks. Uh, most people call them castles. Uh, that's technically wrong. They are called a rook. The way these guys move is they can move as much as they want in any direction as long as it is in one column or one row. So they can go from here all the way to here, or they can go from here all the way to here. They can move in straight lines all across the board until they are either come across a piece that they can capture or a friendly piece that they can't, or the edge of the board. As far as their capturing goes, say we have that guy there, this guy comes across, he can take him, now takes his space. Rooks are one of the power pieces, they are rather good, you want to have them protected, they are really good for getting across the board really early and getting rid of some pieces. These fellas are your bishops. They move on diagonals, which are similar to rooks as opposed to the fact that they can move in as much as they want to go in that particular direction. They just only work on a diagonal. They can never leave the color of the square they're on. So if a bishop starts on a white, it can't ever get to a black square. Same thing, it starts on a black square, can't ever get to a white square. Like we have that guy. He can move along the diagonal in any direction he wants until he either runs out of board capture something or encounters a friendly piece. They're good for sneaking around corners, like say if we had this set up here. Technically, if we had this guy over here, he can go right through there, because there's nothing, even though these are blocking in a visual sense, these squares do not actually get in the way, so he can go right through those guys and get him. These guys are your knights. A lot of people call them horsies. You should hate those people and hurt them. They uh, look like horses because in the old days, knights rode horses. As far as the movement on these guys, the easiest way to figure out how they work, they move on an L. Say we take that guy. Where he moves from there, he doesn't actually move. He jumps to his space. Much like a horse is galloping and leaps over a bush, these guys kind of do the same thing. They move on an L. So they move two forward, and one across. But he technically moves right to there. So he can move from here to here, here to here, to here, 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 and here. The reason I point out that he can jump is that he is the only piece on the board that has the ability to go around other pieces. If you had this somewhat impossible situation, but if any other piece were there, a rook, a bishop, whatever, they would have to capture one of these guys or wait for one of them to move to move from this space. The knight does not care, he just goes over them. So he can go wherever he wants, regardless of what's in his way. Granted, he has to go to an unoccupied square, 
or he has to capture an enemy piece, he can't land on a friendly piece, but he can go around stuff, which makes him a very versatile piece as far as getting him across the board. And he's good for, you know, sneaking into your enemy's ranks, as it were, and getting a piece that your opponent thought was safe. This is the queen, arguably the most powerful piece on the board. You only get one, which all the other guys you get two or eight. Uh, you only get one of her. The reason for that is she is a rook and a bishop put together. She can go in any direction she wants, all the way to the edge of the board, until she hits a piece, whatever. If a queen is lethal in every direction, normally it is goal one to try and get rid of your opponent's queen, goal two, get the king. If you can trade almost any piece to get the queen, it's a worthwhile deal. If you've got any guy anywhere, every single piece that is white, she could take. Not in one turn, but she threatens every single piece that's on this board. She can get that guy, that guy, anyone she wants. So when you put the queen out there, she can do some damage without a whole lot of help. This guy is the king. He is the point of the game. The object is to capture your opponent's king. To be honest, the king is about as effective as a pawn as far as his power. He is a piece to protect. A very few instances are you ever going to go on the offensive with your king. The reason I say this, and I appear into a pawn, is that if he is there, he can only move one space. Granted, it can be in any direction, but he can only move one. And the big point is, like I said, the object is to capture your opponent's king. So if you put him in jeopardy and he gets captured, you lose. So you really don't want to be charging your king on the front lines, else you'll probably have a very quick game. Now we're going to get to a couple of the less basic maneuvers, but they do come up in your average game, so I'm going to go over them. All right. I went and set up the white player uh, for the board. I left the black off for the moment just because I'm going to clear it off to show you how some of the pieces move without anything else in the way. But the standard setup, you have your eight pawns in the front, your two rooks on the end, two knights, two bishops, the queen, and then the king. Uh, as far as remembering which where the king, queen goes and where the king goes, uh, the good tip I always got, queen gets color. That's the white square. This is the white queen. She goes there. That way, you both have the same mirrored setup because the queen would end up over there, right across from one another. We'll start with the pawns and some of the stuff they can do. When you first move a pawn, you have the option, like I said, pawn advances one, but from the starting line here, their first move, you can do a double move. So you can move out to here. That's the only time the pawn can move more than one square. At this point, he advances one at a time and still captures on the diagonal. If you do manage to get a pawn all the way across, now granted this would take a good number of turns, you could promote him. That's what you get for marching him to the other side of the board. You can promote him to any piece you would like. You could have another queen, another bishop, another knight, or another rook. That being said, normally you would take one of your captured pieces, because by the time you've got this guy over here, chances are you've had a few casualties. But if you haven't lost, say, your queen yet, and you get him here, you can still promote him to a queen. Now you have two queens. If you somehow get another one over there, you could have three queens. Games do not last long when you start having multiple queens. However, you do not need to make it a queen. Generally you do, but sometimes the situation calls for you want another knight. Knight's the only one that can move the way it can. If you make it into a rook or a bishop, that's generally considered under promotion because the queen can do both their jobs at the same time, but it is your choice. Another special maneuver that the pawns can do, I'm going to borrow one of the black pieces and I'm going to put him here. Generally this happens later in the game. If a black pawn has gotten all the way to here, and this is the first time I am going to move this guy, I can double move him. However, I double move him to here. Now it is the black player's turn. They can decide to do what is called a capture and passant. It's French. It means in passing. This turn and this turn only, this pawn can capture that one. And he ends up here. Why it works like that, I couldn't really look up the exact ruling on it, but trust me, that's how it works. It comes up maybe once in every 12 games, but it can happen. So generally, you don't want to double move when there are pawns down here because you will lose your guy. And now this pawn is in a free row where there's no pawn in the way. 
And if this knight is moved, well, you put him that much closer to getting promoted. So, thing to keep an eye out for. All right, I went ahead and cleared the board to show a maneuver that the rooks and the king can do. This is called castling, which is probably why these guys started getting called castles. Uh, it's a maneuver that only these guys can do. But the way it works is you opt to castle. You can do it between one rook and your king. So you can use either one. We'll use this guy first. What happens is your rook comes over here, and then your king goes to the other side of him. The same happens. You use this guy. Rook comes here. King goes to the other side of him. You can do it once a game. The reason you can only do it once a game, you can only do it if your king and said rook has not moved yet. Once you've moved him, obviously you've moved him, including castling. This is done, say, if you have a bunch of pieces bearing down on your king and you realize you have nothing to defend him on this side. You can put a rook in the way and now your king has some room to run. The other aspect of it, you can't put the king into a space that he's being threatened. So like if there's an enemy rook over here, you can't do that. The king cannot go into a space where he's being threatened by another piece. He won't do it, he's stubborn. All right, the bread and butter of the game is getting to say that beautiful word, checkmate. 